Hey, this is Ben from Ready, Set, Van. I am super excited about today's video. I've been wanting to do it for almost a year now. So much has changed in terms of internet connectivity uh, as far as van life goes. There are things available now that three years ago we couldn't have even dreamed of. So it's super exciting, but it can be kind of technical. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start uh, with the simplest and cheapest solutions. We're gonna go all the way through to the most expensive and most powerful solutions. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have enough information that you can make a well-informed decision about what's gonna make the most sense for your van life goals. Uh, throughout this video, any mention I make to price is just like just ballpark prices. Prices change every day. This video presumably is gonna last forever. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but certainly it'll be on YouTube for a few years. So uh, prices are just sort of round numbers. Uh, but we'll put links below, so if you want to go and check out the products, there are service plans and things that go along with some of them as well. So that'll give you the most up-to-date info. So let's do it. Okay, first up is the Mighty Cell Phone. You've already got one. It's probably sitting in your pocket unless you're watching this video on it right now. You're already paying for a plan on it. So it's kind of free, sort of. <laughs> and you have a sense of how it works. So, you know, there are tons of towers everywhere. They tend to put more towers where there are more people. And as a result, when you tend to go to more remote places where there are less people, the signal tends to be less reliable, especially if those places are in the mountains uh, or really large desert areas. So for me, that tends to mean that when I get close to the places that I really want to get to, which tend to be mountainous and interesting and have less people, uh, this starts to become less and less reliable. So uh, most of the rest of the solutions are going to be ways to improve on this or, or use different technology altogether. So, you know, the pros on this are you already got one, you're already paying for it, so it's kind of free. Um, you know, the cons are that uh, it's just not that powerful of a signal coming out of this. Um, so it's going to drop off in connectivity faster. Uh, the other thing is that using one of these inside your van, your van's a big metal box, so that will sometimes significantly reduce your signal further. So got to start with this. This is sort of the baseline. This is where everybody starts, but we'll get on to the next and see what that's about. So what we've got here is a WeBoost system. A WeBoost is comprised of three parts. Uh, there's an antenna that goes up on the roof. There is an amplifier that goes somewhere inside your van that requires 12 volt power. Uh, and then there is an internal antenna inside your van as well. And the way this works is that the antenna on the roof of your van is collecting signals from, from the tower. That signal is gonna come into this amplifier and this amplifier is gonna boost that up a little bit. So if it's a really, really weak signal, it's gonna, it's gonna give it a little bit of gain and boost it up and retransmit it inside your van. And so your phone inside your van is gonna to talk to this guy your phone is not really going to know any of this is going on, actually. Your phone is just going to think, oh, I'm closer to the tower than I was uh, otherwise. Um, and then your phone will talk back. So your phone then will send a signal back. Let's say you're you know, sending a message or something like that. That's going to go the other way. So that signal is going to be captured here. It's going to go back into the amplifier. This is sort of a key part. This amplifier then will boost the signal up to the maximum strength that's allowable uh, by the FCC for a cell phone signal. So it means uh, that you're gonna get a full strength signal going out of this guy on the roof of your van. It also means that you're gonna bypass that whole problem, uh, the sort of Faraday, ca Faraday cage issue of the van where you're inside this metal box. Um, so this also kind of lets you get your, the antenna portion of your phone sort of out onto the roof of the van, so it's gonna operate a little bit better. So I did a lot of testing on this system outside Asheville, North Carolina on a trip last year. And one of the things I discovered is that, you know, if you have a, a good or certainly, or even a great signal already, the WeBoost isn't really gonna make any difference. Uh, you're not gonna notice the difference. Also, if you have like absolutely zero signal, WeBoost isn't gonna help at all because there's nothing for it to boost at all. Uh, but the place where this system actually does help quite a lot is in that situation where you have like barely have a signal like it's it's just trash <laughs> like maybe you've got one bar um, but like you're having trouble sending texts or you just you know you're trying to get a web page to load and maybe you get one loaded but then you never get another one to load um, and that kind of situation is where the WeBoost can really shine and one of the main reasons is um, is not so much the information that's coming from the tower, because uh, that tends to be coming at a pretty good strength. It's your phone's ability to get a signal back to the tower, because uh, the phone has a very little uh, antenna in it, and it has a small battery, and it's doing everything it can to conserve its battery strength. And um, you know, anytime you want to load a web page, 
it needs to send a signal to the tower, and it does that by taking some energy from your battery and converting it into radio energy and sending it out. Um, and so it's always going to do sort of the minimum that it can, um, and it's not really designed to put out a ton of radio energy um, all the time. So what's really helpful about this system in that kind of situation where it's just, you know, the tower is really far away, your phone really isn't, isn't the tower just isn't hearing your phone. Um, this is really helpful in that situation because the phone sends a signal out, it goes through this inside antenna, it gets boosted up pretty significantly, and then on your roof, it goes out as a serious signal. Um, and that can be the difference between, you know, nothing working at all, and all of a sudden, you know, you're able to get your texts out. So um, it can be the make the difference between, you know, having a usable connection and not having a usable connection at all. But um, that's really the only time that it's gonna be useful. The rest of the time when you've got a great signal, you're not gonna notice the difference. It's really only in those super marginal situations that it uh, shines. So pros of the system are that, it, number one, it's, it's pretty affordable. Uh, it's in the you know, three to $500 range. It's reasonably easy to install. You need to mount this on the roof. You need to figure out how you're gonna get this wire inside your van. There's kind of nothing to it. Your phone just connects to it. It's, there's no setup or anything like that. There are no uh, you know, monthly service fees or anything like that, or there's no service plan like there will be with some of these other things we talk about. So it's pretty cheap uh, to get you going. The cons, of course, are that most of the time it's not really being that helpful to you. You know, if you already have a good cell phone signal, you're not going to notice the difference. And if you really don't have any signal at all, it's not going to help you either. So, so that's that system. We're going to do one slight modification to this system in the next one. So the next step is to take that same WeBoost equipment, swap out your phone for a Wi-Fi hotspot, and put that Wi-Fi hotspot close to this antenna, keep it in your van, keep it powered all the time. And now you've kind of crossed the threshold into a uh, kind of a a new level of possibilities. Having a permanent Wi-Fi solution in your van means that suddenly you unlock the capability of having Wi-Fi cameras or Wi-Fi thermostats or I don't know. The whole suite of sort of Wi-Fi connected home devices suddenly are possible in your van because your van has persistent Wi-Fi internet connection. That's really nice for people who have pets and they want to leave their pets in there when they go into the store or something like that, but they want to be able to check on them. They want to be able to check and see what the temperature is in the van if it's uh, during the summer. Um, you know, and things like that. So, you know, it's not going to improve your, your ability to connect to the, you know, the internet in any way. It's going to be exactly the same as your cell phone was. Uh, it just means that now your van has always got a Wi-Fi signal. It means if you want your devices to latch on to that Wi-Fi signal when you return to the van, they can. Um, and, that's, and that's good uh, as well. So the pros of this setup are, number one, that it's relatively inexpensive. This hardware isn't super expensive. Um, it's easy to set up and you open the door to these, you know, sort of wide range of internet connected devices that you would have in your home. Suddenly you could also have in your van. So that's certainly a nice feature. You know, in the cons column, you're really looking at the fact that you've also crossed the threshold into having a monthly data plan, which you didn't have before, except what you were already paying for on your cell phone. So that's a bummer. But, uh, you know, for pretty much all of the things that we're going to talk about from here on out, there's going to be a monthly plan of some kind. That said, if it were me and I were doing a new van and I was comparing this to the next setup, um, I would definitely choose the next setup over this whole combination. Uh, there's a, you'll see in a minute, there's a, a little bit more of a outlay for the hardware, um, but the benefits are pretty significant. So let's get into that. Okay, folks, amateur hour is over. What we've got here is a really powerful system. It's the same system that's used by a lot of first responders, police departments, any, any institution or organization that really uh, depends on cell phone based data networks to complete their job function. They rely on either this system or a system that's very, very similar to it. And uh, we actually had a client a, a couple years ago now uh, who's a bit of a network nerd, who came to us and said, this is the system for me, we, you know, we gotta put this in, in our van, and he kind of brought it to us. And then we did our research and we talked to uh, the people where we, that we buy this from, and uh, we're just blown away. And since then, we've installed it in a lot of vans, and we've had just nothing but, like, just praise for the system. And I'll talk, talk a little bit more about how it works, but it has performed exceptionally well. So uh, I'm going to kind of walk you through the two components here. This is the antenna, which is actually seven different antennas inside, which is kind of crazy. That's why it has this huge bundle of wires here. Uh, four of those antennas are 5G uh, cell phone antennas. 
Two of the antennas are Wi-Fi antennas, and then the last antenna is a GPS antenna. So there's seven different antennas in there. This whole unit mounts to the roof. We actually make a hole through the center of the roof, and this whole thing bolts to the roof, and we make a roof adapter to seal all this up. It's a little bit of a project, but it's not that big of a deal. Not necessarily something that's easy to do as a retrofit, but that, of course, depends on your build. But that's the antenna, it's great. This here is the router. So this is a cell phone Wi-Fi router. You can see on the back here, we have all the connections for uh, the cell phone connections and the Wi-Fi uh, connections here and the GPS. So we've got four different SIM card slots here. Uh, I'll tell you more about that in a moment. And then on the back, we also have some network connections, 12 volt power. So this is powered off of 12 volts, which is awesome. Love that. Uh, and then some other uh, features here, which uh, we don't actually typically use. What's great about this uh, is number one, we have this antenna that's on the roof of the van that's getting the absolute best possible connection at all times. It's connected to this, which can we can run multiple SIM cards in. So that each one of those SIM cards can be connected to a different cell plan. So you could run a Verizon plan on one of those. You could run a T-Mobile plan on another one. Uh, you could do even more on the other two. Uh, I don't think we have any clients that run more, more than two cards, uh, but something like running a Verizon and a T-Mobile is pretty common. Inside here, uh, you can connect to the software in here through a browser and you can configure all the kinds of settings in terms of if you want it to use Verizon as your primary uh, connection, then it'll do that unless Verizon's not available and then have it fail over onto T-Mobile or reverse, or you can have it always just choose which one has got the best connection. So it'll be constantly pinging the towers and whenever it gets the lowest latency, it switches over to that one. The whole setup uh, is about 1500 bucks right now, I think. You know, there's a bit more of an install to it. So there, if somebody's doing that work for you, it might be a little more expensive. The Wi-Fi on this is incredibly powerful because it has these two Wi-Fi antennas that are on the roof. The distance that this Wi-Fi travels is significantly more than like a hotspot, for example. If you were running a hotspot, that might only go, you know, five or 10 feet outside of your van. Uh, this thing, your Wi-Fi signal is gonna go a couple hundred feet at least. So, you know, if you're at a campground, you might even not even be able to see your van, but you're still gonna be connected to it, which is, which is pretty great. So obviously, you know, we're big fans of this. It's still a cell phone based network connection. So it's still only gonna work, you know, if you are within reach of towers. So most of the country, you'll get a good connection, um, but still in, you know, mountainous areas or really, really remote areas, uh, you might find yourself not getting a connection with it. So that's just something you're gonna have to keep in mind. Pros and cons with this, you know, the main pro is it's incredibly flexible, it's incredibly powerful. Um, it is the best cell, you know, data connection uh, that you're gonna be able to get. In the cons column, price, uh, you're gonna be in, you know, whatever it is, let's say $1,500 for the cost of the equipment. Uh, the install, and then of course, whatever plans you choose to get, you know, if you do one or two plans. Um, so there's that. And then the last con is of course, like it's still based on cell data network. So um, it's not gonna get you a connection absolutely everywhere. For that, we should move on to the satellite choice. Okay, so we've made it to the Starlink section. Starlink, if you don't know what it is, is a constellation of satellites. It's about 6,000 satellites that are in low Earth orbit uh, with the goal of making broadband internet connection available to the entire planet, which is an absolutely bonkers goal, uh, but it seems like they're doing it. What's wonderful about that is by doing that, they are blanketing you know, the entire planet, which includes places that already have internet connections, but it also includes places that never had an internet connection. And so it's really kind of opening up uh, parts of the world that it would never make financial sense to run a fiber optic cable to or even a, you know, a cell tower anywhere near them. Suddenly those really remote places uh, have the possibility of having a broadband connection uh, through the satellite network. So super awesome. There are some definite downsides to it. We'll get into that. I don't want you to think that this is like everything you've ever wanted because it's not, but it is very, very interesting. So let's talk about the equipment. The first option is this dish right here. It was the original dish that they made. Uh, it was affectionately called Dishy and uh, it was designed for residential homes. Uh, and you know, you put it down on your lawn or you put it in your roof. And this actually has a motor and a kind of a gimbal inside. So this whole dish here will pivot around and it'll look for the satellites in the sky. Um, the satellites actually pass over, it's only like 90 seconds. They just we whiz by, so they're constantly having to kind of find them in the sky. And so this can actually pivot around and find where all the, all the satellites are. 
and uh, you know, and hone in on them. So this was the original. It is uh, smaller than the next one that we're gonna talk about. It is uh, less expensive. So this one, I think, oof, and they keep changing their prices, but this, like, at least the last time I looked, was $500. This also has a bunch of options that people have kind of hacked and modified this thing a bunch of times. So this whole really kind of crazy rig down here. Some people cut this whole thing away and they, they actually like flat mount this on the roof of their van. It's a little bit adventurous, uh, but it, it, it does work. And then those same people also do another hack to this model uh, where they convert it from 110 volt to 12 volt, uh, which gives you more uh, energy savings. I'll talk more about energy in a little bit, but, um, but so this is that original model. This is not designed to be mounted to your van. It's, it's just not even meant to be in your van at all. It's, it's meant to be for your home, but it comes with a giant long cable that's like, I don't even know how long, maybe 100 feet. And one of the nice things about that is it means you can kind of move it around as well. So uh, you could mount this to your van, but you could also keep it mobile. One of the reasons that that is a consideration uh, when, you're, when you're using one of these is no matter which one you have, you have to have direct line of sight to the sky. So you can't be under trees. You can't have a building in the way. Uh, you really need to have a, a pretty, pretty significant amount of the sky visible um, to the dish to be able to make your connection. And with uh, van life, you know, a lot of times, at least in my case, especially on the East Coast, the places I want to be are, you know, very often forests and things like that. And this is going to have a hard time seeing the sky if I wanted to be parked under the tree. But if I parked under the tree and there was an opening not too far away, I could put this over there, run the cord all the way over to a spot where it's got a full line of sight to the sky and be in good shape. So, so that is one advantage of this more, this more portable unit. But you know, there, you know, there are downsides to this portable unit as well, where it's like, this is sort of annoying. I wish this folded up because <laughs> this is just like, it's a really uh, annoying thing to store in your van. The other uh, piece of equipment is this one. So they, when they first released it, it was called the InMotion Dish. I think they changed the name of it. I don't even know, but it's the big flat dish. <laughs> That's what they call it now. You can't really tell uh, because of the, the lens perspective here, because uh, this seems bigger than it actually is. But this dish is actually has twice the surface area as this dish. This dish is uh, designed to be a uh, fixed mounted to uh, the roof of your RV or your van or your boat. And they made it bigger to uh, compensate for the fact that it no longer has that gimbling capability that this one has. So because it can't move around, it's flat, they made it bigger so it can kind of as a more effective uh, collection area. And this is not small as well. So this is I think 20 by 23 inches. So if you were gonna mount this to the roof of your van, it takes up kind of a significant amount of room and it, it needs to be part of your, your, your layout plan when you do it. So uh, at least for us, if we're gonna mount one of these to the roof of a van, um, we end up having to shift the fan off center. Uh, so we'll kind of do them side by side often. It's not always the same solution, but. Another thing about this dish compared to this dish is this one uses twice as much energy, which is a lot of energy. This one uses about a thousand, a thousand watts, a hundred watts. Uh, and this one uses about 200 watts uh, when it's on, uh, which is a lot of energy. It's not a lot of energy for a short period of time, but internet is something you tend to use for a long period of time. So um, if you were to run this thing constantly all the time, uh, I think, you know, you could run the numbers, but you're gonna blow through batteries pretty quickly. That's a pretty significant consideration uh, as far as I'm concerned. Otherwise, as far as the equipment goes, you know, they're great. Once this thing's installed up there, there's not much to it. Uh, they do come with these really annoying things. There's, they're kind of big. You can, you know, you tuck them away. You can, one of these is a, is a Wi-Fi router and you can replace that with a different Wi-Fi router. Um, and then the other one is the control unit for the actual dish. Um, itself, but you know, you tuck them away. Uh, both of them are run off 110 power, which is a bummer uh, for sure. Uh, that you know, like I, I mentioned, there's a 12 volt conversion kit or thing that people do for this. I haven't seen anybody do a 12 volt conversion for this. I'm sure it's just a matter of time. If you are going to run this on 110 power, probably a good idea to have a separate, much smaller, kind of dedicated small inverter to run this, so that you don't have to run your main inverter, uh, which you know, uses a lot of energy uh, on its own. But otherwise, you know, for the equipment, that's about it. So let's talk about use case. 
So it's really going to depend on you know where you're planning on going, whether or not this is going to make a lot of sense for you. Uh, if you're going to be in wide open areas in Utah and other you know kind of open, expansive desert areas, this is amazing. You know you always have clear uh, vision to the sky. Uh, you're probably also not going to have a cell phone connection. Uh, so this seems like a really good fit. On the East Coast, where we have lots of cell connectivity, but we also have lots of trees and we have uh, you know, lots of buildings and things like that where, you know, you're going to start having less access to the sky or less visibility to the sky, you might have issues there. When I've taken this with me on a number of trips, I rarely end up using it. The only time I really ended up using it is if I knew I needed to make uh, like an important video call or something like that where I wanted a really solid connection. I've heard this from other Starlink users on the East Coast. I guess it's a bit of a joke where it's sort of like, if what you wanna do is meet other Starlink users, uh, then just look around when you set up your dish. If the campground has one area that doesn't have trees, chances are all the Starlink users have clumped into that one area so they can try and get their, their internet connection. That said, it is amazing when it works and when it kind of works for you. Um, I think it really, you kind of have to think long and hard about where you're going to be using it. You know, are you depending solely on this for your internet connection and so on? So it's a complicated thing. I would say I typically won't recommend this as the only internet solution uh, for our clients, unless they're planning on spending all of their time out west in wide open areas. So that pretty much wraps up Starlink. We got one more to go and I'm sure you're thinking like, what could that even be at this point? You're probably also thinking like, ah, this Ben guy, what a nice guy. Came in on the weekend, shot this whole video, taught me all about internet and van stuff. And he's probably gonna make more of these videos. And I should probably subscribe. <clears throat> it's like right, it's just like right there. You just, it's like, uh, it's like right. It's like I can almost reach it, but I can't. So, yeah. All right, let's do the next one. Well, wouldn't you know it, the most powerful solution is actually just combining the best-in-class cellular data connection that we have and the best-in-class satellite connection that we have. And the beauty is that the Peplink router will actually take uh, an Ethernet input from the satellite dish. So we can combine these all into one Wi-Fi signal we can manage the pr and prioritize them within the software of that, which is really fantastic. If I were installing this on my van, which honestly, I kind of <laughs> hope maybe my next van, uh, I am able to do this. I would set it up so that this has a uh, power switch for it. I would have uh, whatever data plans I have on here. The data plans on the cell network, you pay per gigabyte. The data plan on uh, the Starlink, you pay per month. So. If I knew I was in a situation where I had good access to run this, I would flip this on. I would set this up to prioritize the Starlink over the cellular. And that way I wouldn't be continuing to burn my data plan over there. And then I would shut this off if I felt like I was using too much energy. That's just one configuration. You can figure it any number of ways, uh, but it's a very incredibly powerful setup. As it, as it stands. One final note, if you're gonna invest in any of this equipment, I think it's a really good idea to uh, purchase it from a company that supports the, its customers and has a record of doing that. I don't have any personal relationship with Mobile Must Have. We have their links down below. It is where we purchase, where Ready, Set, Van purchases this equipment and we buy it from them. And the reason that we do that is because they have been very, very good at supporting our clients out on the road when they have questions about how these things work or how to set them up or anything like that. So um, you don't have to buy any of the stuff from them, but I think if you're gonna make the investment, it's a good idea to make sure that whatever co company you do purchase from um, has a good reputation for supporting their, their products. Thank you for watching. I hope this was like informative and helpful. I hope this kind of pushes you closer to reaching some of your van life goals. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.